So, is it true that unvaccinated people cause more car accidents? This is a study that came out recently, a few days ago, I believe, that investigated that. So, you know how I always start my videos with a question. Here is one question, but then I'll follow that up with another question. Is it true that unvaccinated people faced higher levels of discrimination because of their vaccination status? We're going to link these two types of information in this video, so let's get started. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Merogenomics. And as I mentioned a few days ago, a video came out that showed that people in Ontario, so the largest province in Canada, the most populous province in Canada, were more likely to be involved in car accident than vaccinated people. So this was a very large study. It was actually based on looking at the vaccination status and traffic reports of involving 11 million people out of those 11, so almost the entire population of, of Ontario. And um, out of those 11 million people, there was approximately in the time period study that they looked at, which was, um, I believe, might have been by the end of um, summer of uh, 2021. And uh, they, it was about 7,000 car accidents. And when they actually looked at the um, vaccination status versus who is unvaccinated, it turned out that in comparison, unvaccinated people were almost twice as likely to be involved in, in a car accident than vaccinated people. Now, what's very interesting about this paper is how the authors chose to look at this and they believed and they, they looked at the information that it might have to do with the type of behavior that unvaccinated people might be involved with, which basically the insinuation is that it, unvaccinated people are more likely to be involved in participating in more risky behavior, which actually goes aligned with the concept that this is also why they might have been unvaccinated because they're more likely potentially to be distrustful and so on. However, I looked at obviously the data and there were some things that I actually felt that the paper was not discussing at all. So besides the vaccination status mm, having an influence on the likelihood of, of causing car accident, what else could, could be contributing? So the biggest one, the biggest contributing factor, double than the vaccination status, was whether the person <laughs> was drunk or not, whether alcohol was involved, I should say. So because don't, that, didn't check whether whether they were defining it as drunk but whether whether there was alcohol involved and alcohol involvement of alcohol was the largest contributor to the likelihood of of the car accident so okay so what are we what's happening with that well the second besides that the second largest contributing factor was actual age and if you were a young person the likelihood was one and a half times higher that you were going to be involved in car accident. Now, everyone knows this, right? That younger people are more likely to be involved in car accidents. Hence, that's reflected by insurance policies. Now, you see there is potential issue here is because younger people were also less likely to be vaccinated for obvious reasons because they were they did not perceive the risk to themselves from from infection the same way that the risk uh, had to be perceived by older individuals and that's obvious we all know that the, the, the largest likelihood of experiencing severity when you're infected with SARS-CoV-2 virus is your age so that's obviously problematic because I found that the authors did not address that at all and the third biggest contributing factor to the likelihood of causing a car accident in the study besides, of course, the vaccination status, was depression. So it was a similar, similar factor to, to the age. And I found that part very interesting. And the reason why is because also not too long ago, another paper came out which studied the discrimination status amongst the populations, uh, whether vaccinated or unvaccinated people were involved in greater likelihood of discrimination towards each other. Very interesting study because it involved 21 countries. They were doing um, certain questionnaires that allowed to measure discrimination. And basically what they were able to find that 
in all of the nations that they were looking at uh, across the participants who were who were involved in in these questionnaires vaccinated people discriminated against the unvaccinated within all of the nations except couple two of them i think the only two that where they were not able to achieve that statistical significance was hungary and romania otherwise everywhere else there was a clear discrimination so what are we talking about i apologize for the background noise what are we talking about here we're talking about where vaccinated people were Mm, the way they were behaving is they were, first of all, they, they, um, they felt antipathy towards va unvaccinated people. They also mm, excluded unvaccinated people from social family behavior. So there, there was that aspect. Mm, and they also were involved in warning people to exclude unvaccinated from civil rights and political rights. So all of these, and uh, they also were involved in stereotypes. And all of these, according to the authors of that publications, is what in psychological social studies would be referred to as a form of prejudice. And this form of prejudice, as I mentioned, was, was experienced in all of the countries, the strongest ones, especially in the United States. And they, the authors explained that, that this is actually explained by normal psychological behavior where the desire is to participate in common behavior. And if somebody does not participate in the expected common behavior, these people are seen as free riders, that's how the authors of that publication explained it, and you automatically experience bias towards that. So this is, this, and this is a normal behavior. So this, in this context, that's what happened, and hence you saw this experience of prejudice. What's interesting is that this, this, this did not happen the other way around. So that means unvaccinated people did not exhibit this type of behavior towards vaccinated people. The closest, the closest of that was perhaps in uh, Germany and the United States where there was some elements of unvaccinated people feeling some antipathy towards vaccinated, but even then it could not reach statistical value. So why do I bring this up? Is because obviously if you're feeling, if you're experiencing prejudice and discrimination, we all know that, that this is actually a highly contributing factor towards negative mental health outcomes. And that can include obviously depression and therefore you can see that if people who were unvaccinated were experiencing such negative behavior, and we know that it doesn't even matter what age, what age group you belong to, if you are discriminated against and, and experiencing prejudice towards you, that will have high likelihood of experiencing negative health outcomes, negative mental health outcomes, such as greater likelihood of experiencing anxiety and depression. So. Therefore, you can see how if you are in such an unhealthy mental state, you might not make judgments as effectively than if you were in completely normal, happy, positive mental health state. And that could be also a contributing factor as to why individuals could, be under high stress duress, could be involved in greater likelihood of, of car accidents. Now, the authors of the previous papers did not comment on any of this and I found that <laughs> I found that this might be a form of that the very same discrimination that this other paper actually discussed where there is this bias towards how unvaccinated people should be treated because they don't seem to belong to the majority and the authors of the paper on the discrimination even mentioned we have to be careful with, with that because when you divide society on on any aspects even if they actually have high moral grounds behind, behind them, such discrimination will lead to conflicts in society and that can be dangerous. So they even called for governments to avoid espousing high moral grounds towards one behavior versus another in order to avoid this kind of fracturing of societies in the future. So I thought that together this was very interesting. All right, I'm going to wrap it up right here because uh -oh, the noise is coming back. 
And uh, so I just want to say thank you everyone for supporting the channel. Thank you for sharing. Please subscribe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next installment of the video or in the next uh, coming up COVID Q&A video. Bye everyone. Stay healthy.